The first important aspect that I've been told, and as I read in the brochure and the diary that was sent to me, is you become saksham, you become capable, you become, you hone your skills and your abilities are strengthened, new horizons conquered. In short, you upgrade your abilities day in and day out and you become an able person. Because abilities of a person are the first requirement for growth. If you are quite able, if you are quite capable, you'll be able to handle the work well, you'll be able to handle the people well, you'll be able to adapt yourself to situations and circumstances. Added with experience, added with talents, you adapt yourself to sustain better in times because change is part of life and change is the only constant. The rest, everything is variable. So when your abilities increase, you adapt yourself well to changing situations and you grow well, you sustain well in the most odd of circumstances and happenings in life, of course, at office, at, ho at your ho home back, at all the places. And then you carve out a place for yourself, you live a life that is satisfying to you, you achieve your goals well, you become a very important team player, more than that, you become a most needed person in your system. This all comes from one basic thing is your abilities. And you need to hone your skills day in and day out. Because the most important aspect in a human being is the ability to grow. You can grow in all the aspects of life. When Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Sherpa, they decided to conquer Everest. All planning well done, execution well started, but for some reasons they had to come back from the third base camp. They could see the tip of the Himalayas, the highest point of the Himalayas, that is Everest. But the final leg they could not conquer, they had to come back. After coming back at ground level, Edmund Hillary looked back at the Everest again, at the Himalayas, and he spoke one sentence that poured out from his heart, and that has become very famous. Edmund Hillary, he said, looking at the Everest, I'll come back again, and I'll conquer you, because as a mountain, you cannot grow. As a human being, I can. As a human being, you always possess the capacity to grow. And if you don't utilize that capacity of yours to grow, you cease to be a human being. You are a student who can grow till the age of 90, 90, but till the last breath of your life. Do you believe in that? You can increase your capabilities. You can become more and more suction till the last breath of your life. Do you believe in that? Yes. That belief is a good start for growth. That belief itself possesses the strength for growth. And that belief itself will make you grow. You have the capability and you can. One tree can start a forest. Understand this very well. And when I'm talking, I'm not going to elaborate it. One tree can start a forest. One song can start excitement. Yes or no? One smile can rejuvenate the atmosphere. Yes or no? One star in the dark skies can guide the ship in the sea. One star in the dark skies can guide a ship at sea. 
one person with the right attitude for growth his action has more power than 99 people just taking interest one man can make all the difference to this extent that one man's purity can change the whole world one man's character can uplift the whole world this whole description converges into one thing and that is called the power of one it is called the power of one one thing can make all the difference at all the places one small drop of a chemical can increase the strength of the whole material it is called the power of one one person's ability the first basic core value of saksham develop your abilities well to meet the situations that can confront you in your path one man's ability can save the whole company can be instrumental in the growth of the whole company can lay a foundation stone for the saksham for making everybody saksham one man's ability has the power this is also a fact a fact lived by many today many live by it but to develop your full saksham full capability full abilities that you have because we all sitting here and thousands of professionals in the world today we will die without not realizing our full potential we will live our lives of 70 80 90 years without bringing out many latent talents and many latent energies that already have, we have been gifted with yes or no albert einstein he used only 3% of his brain is considered to be the most intelligent person ever upon this earth then what amount of brain that you and me must be using so there are n number of abilities that we possess n number of talents that we possess so we are highly saksham highly saksham we need to bring those out by good thinking by good exposures by learning from experiences by learning from obstacles hurdles oppositions by learning from setbacks failures and falls you become more saksham so invite difficulties hug your problems enjoy your falls you will become more saksham are you rightly getting me am i right or wrong is part of life but you become more saksham only if you have the right kind of attitude till the 90s there was a question in the top management mind why some people with the best of abilities with the best of resources available still they succeed less or sometimes fail and why sometimes with lesser resources people succeed and succeed more so by the turn of the millennium it was very clear in the top management mind and the top management gurus that all the resources combined do not necessarily guarantee you success then what guarantees your success they said with more or less resources the one thing that guarantees success it is your right kind of attitude towards your abilities the first principle of saksham we are talking of ability your attitude towards it i can do it i can make it happen that attitude towards your abilities that faith in your abilities will make you grow will make you succeed i have read more than 500 biographies and autobiographies of great personalities from nelson mandela to abraham lincoln to george washington to winston churchill to mahatma gandhi to sardar patel to sachin tendulkar everybody they always believed that they were saksham they always believed that they had the abilities 
to overcome any difficulties. They always believed that they had the power, they had the ability, they had the skills to do any job in front of them. They were that confident. A very important aspect to be learned from these people, isn't it? Yes or no? They always believed that they were Saksham. Believe that you are Saksham. Irrespective of the resources and backgrounds that you have. Because Swami Vivekananda used to say, each and every soul is potentially divine. Our Guru Pramukh Swami Maharaj, who created this organization to this level, as I said, we are among the top 10 NGOs of the world. He single-handedly built, you have seen Akshar Dham, he single-handedly built 1300 such campuses and successfully administered it in 60 countries of the world. And that Akshar Dham that you see today, we are building such four huge Akshar Dhams. Already the construction work has started. One is in New Jersey, America at Robbinsville. It is on 265 acres of land. Second is in Abu Dhabi. Third is in Johannesburg, South Africa. And fourth is in Sydney, Australia. All projects coming up as huge as Akshar Dham. And you are all involved with logistics. I tell you one logistics that at present our organization is going through. Granite, marble and stone comes from Italy and Greece to Kanla in Gujarat. From there it is road transported to Pinwada in Rajasthan. Today when I am talking to you at this present moment, more than 5,000 artisans are working on 26 different sites in Rajasthan. Again, the carved stone from Rajasthan is road transported back to Kanla, the free trade zone in Gujarat. From there, it is shipped to US. Just imagine the logistics. From Europe, it comes to Gujarat. From Gujarat, it goes to US. The logistics is mind-boggling. And more than 800 people involved in it. And then, so it's an ideal Make in India project. Raw material from Europe, all done, finished goods prepared in Gujarat and Rajasthan and shipped back to US. Make, made in India, assembled in US. And the whole Akshardham monument and 265 acres are coming up and we are going to inaugurate it in August 2021. Attitude makes a big difference. We can do it. We are saksham. We are capable. We can make it happen. That is, that is the thought that should run in you right from morning. So this was the concept in the 90s and the turn of the millennium in the management guru's minds from Jim Collins to Stephen Covey to Anthony Robbins, everybody. And so Jeff Keller writes the book which became very famous which topped the list in the New York Times list for 64 weeks, which itself is a world record. And the title of the book is, I think, every professional, all of you, if you have a piece of paper and pen, you must definitely write it down. You must read this book. And the title of the book is, Attitude is Everything. With lesser or more resources, still you can succeed is what this book teaches and preaches you and what this book makes you believe. Attitude is everything. Abhigam. Hum Hindi mein usko bolte hai. Abhigam. Abhigam hi sarvaswa hai. Attitude makes all the difference. So developing your abilities, making yourself more saksham, your attitude will play the principal role. Apart from your skills, apart from your know-hows, apart from your academics, apart from your talents, apart from your experiences, apart from your support systems, apart from your platforms, apart from your back systems. This plays a major role. Another aspect of developing your abilities is the time-consuming activities of your life which does not add on to your abilities. You must restrict it. Just about a few days back, India's top badminton coach, Gopi Chand, he was one time all, in, all England champ. He was interviewed in Hyderabad. I just got the 
print of that interview published by one of the newspapers just a couple of days back. Wonderful interview with Gopichan. And he is the person who guided two girls to the top, P.V. Sidhu and Saina Neval, to the world stage, to the Olympic stage, to international champions. He said in one of his inter in, in the interview, to answering one of the questions, and everybody were amazed. He said, I took away the mobile from, from both the girls, PV Sidhu and Saina Neval, eight months before the Olympics. I didn't want them at all to focus on any aspect of life other than the Olympic gold. And both the students of Gopi Chan. Both the girls, they respected the coach's decision. They accepted it well. They went eight months without the mobile phone. Imagine just eight minutes in your life without the mobile. Wherever we are sitting, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, eight minutes is too much. I tell you, every third minute, if you don't touch your mobile, you get discharged. So for developing your full potential to bring out the all capabilities of yourself that, has, that you have been gifted by nature, everybody of us, you have to cut down on certain things, certain activities, certain thought processes, certain gadgets which actually don't help you to develop your abilities. And both these girls did and we, and we see the result. Isn't it? So again this aspect, to develop your full abilities, cut down on certain things which don't help you. Unnecessary activities. Very important aspect. One more positive less is done, but one more negative done is not done. Did you get this? One positive step not taken is perhaps acceptable at one point of time. But one negative step taken is not acceptable because it has the power to bring down five positives down. Abilities are the most important aspect. And when you become quite capable, quite able for a job, another aspect that I want to tell you is opportunities will come knocking your door. Because there is a natural force of attraction between ability and opportunity. Are you getting me right? There is a natural force of attraction as the two magnets, they attract each other, the north and the south pole. Abilities and opportunities will attract. If you are sound in your abilities, the first core value of Saksham, it will never remain hidden. In some or the other way, it will come out. In some or the other way, it will be known to the people in the society, in the market. And people will approach you. Work will come to you. Opportunities will knock your door. In 1996, India was touring England. I'm talking of the game of cricket. At that time, India's captain was Mohammad Azaruddin. And we had one of the star players, his name was Navjot Singh Sidhu. Today he is an MLA in Punjab, he is a minister. For some reason there was a brawl between Navjot Singh Sidhu and Azaruddin. Before the start of a practice match, they both, they both got, got into a brawl for some reason. There was a, like a verbal exchange between the two. And at the height of it, Navjot Singh Sidhu left the ground left the hotel, straight to the airport, and without telling anybody, the coach or the manager, or his captain or any team player, he came back to India. Everybody in the team and the manager and the coach came to know about him reaching India after he had reached. So that was, this was a very serious breach of discipline. Isn't it? <laughs> but that paved the way for his roommate to debut. That, this incident paved the way for his roommate, 
for his debut entry into the Indian cricket team to play his test matches. And this was at Lord's, the mother of all grounds, the most prestigious venue for cricket. And his little known roommate, he stepped inside Lord's because of this incident, because of the absence of Naujot Singh Sidhu. He was definitely a part of the 11 member playing squad. Naujot Singh Sidhu he used to come three down or four down. But then, because of this, a boy, a very young boy, was part of the 22 member contingent that had gone there. And never destined to play in England because he was fifth or sixth after the 11 member team to at all come, at, if at all needed. But he had abilities. So he was selected and the debutant. He scored a century at Lords on his debut. And thereafter, nothing holding him back. He went on to become one of the most successful captains of Indian cricket team. I'm talking of Saurav Ganguly. He possessed the ability in some or the other way, nature decided to give him an opportunity. But remember one thing, the second step, when he got the opportunity, he could show his class, he could show his caliber because of one reason, and that is he possessed the ability for it. When he was fully ability able, when he was fully ability capable, when he got the opportunity, he could show his skills, he could show his class and caliber. And that, after that, we know his whole career, there was no looking back for him. So, when you are able, an opportunity will definitely come from the highest level. Because again, I would like to repeat, ability and opportunity always attract each other. They will always attract each other. But when the opportunity knocks to your door, and if you are fully ready, fully able, fully capable, you will fully utilize that opportunity and that will became, become the first sound platform for you to jump at different levels of progress in your career. As simple as that. So this is the first principle and the core value of Saksham. Try to hone your abilities day in and day out. Learning never stops. We can keep learning till the last breath of our life. Recently, just about a few months back, a lady at the age of 93, she became a diploma engineer. She always had a dream to become an engineer, but she could not for some reason. But then at the age of 90, she felt that let's go for engineering. She didn't want to do a job of engineering, but it was a dream to become an engineer. For some reason, she could, she could not in her young days. She had a wonderful career in the com commerce field. But that small dream, she fulfilled at the age of 93. So you can always develop your abilities, your capabilities, your skills till the last breath of your life. First part is that. Second part is, if you are quite able, change is a part of life is the only constant. Let me tell one more word to change beyond these two words is change is routine. Routinely it will come. Adaptability is a very important aspect. Recently Harvard University has put forward a definition for intelligence and the definition is adaptability to change is intelligence. Highest level of intelligence is your adaptability to change. A change comes in your life. A change comes in your career. How quick you can adapt yourself to it. That makes you intelligent. Otherwise, if you cannot adapt to change, all your talents, skills, intelligence, know-how, knowledge, experience, all, all things don't count. You have to change. With the change, adapt yourself. You might have always heard that saints used to do 
kathas on Ramayana and Mahabharata and everything. We do. But we change with the times as well. Now we are going to the professional field to talk to the professionals as well. So you change with the times because at the end of the day, it's our duty, a moral duty, to imbibe more and more values and virtues in the lives of people. We used to do it by parents and kathas. We continue it. We also now do it with professional talks. As simple as that. So adaptability to change is intelligence. This is a Harvard University definition. How many of you have read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Just raise your hands. About three of you. I think more of you, you must as a professional. I'm surprised why you have not read till day. It's like a 20, 25 year old book. He personally met more than 3,000 successful people upon this earth, successful not just as a businessman, but in all walks of life. As successful as a husband, as a wife, as a brother, as a sister, as a neighbor, as a friend, all roles to be played by a person. He personally interviewed them, and he comes to a conclusion that these seven habits I found common in these people, and the first habit common that he found in these people was proactive. This is Hindi mein bolte hain, pratikul paristiti mein sanukul pratibhav. This is called adaptability. Pratikul paristiti mein sanukul pratibhav. That is in the circumstances that or situations that are not comfortable, that you are not comfortable with them. You produce out a response. That is comfortable to your team, to the circumstances, to the happenings. Proactive is the word, first habit that they had. Proactivity means adaptability. In the negative happenings, you give a positive response. That is called proactive. And that is the best adaptability. Because that response comes out of certain core values that you have decided to live with in your life. One small example, that whoever even gives me a cuss word, throws it at me, I will always respond it with a smile. For example, if you have decided this in your life, I will never say a cuss word, but anybody throwing it at me, I'll respond it with a good smile. Now this is called proactivity. This is a good adaptability. From that to many things. Adaptability with situations, with circumstances. Our Guru Pramukh Swami Maharaj, he was once in New York and the room in which he was sitting was quite small because the construction was of the 70s. And somebody told him the room is very small. Pramukh Swami Maharaj responded, small rooms are good, less power is utilized. Just one week after that he was in Toronto where it was quite spacious, lately built and the same person said, Swamiji such big rooms are quite good. Pramukh Swami said, yes, big rooms are quite good. Good. More people can be incorporated in. More people can sit. Small room is also good. Big room is also good. This is called adaptability. Your attitude towards looking at it. Small room, less power used. Big room, fine. More people can walk in, come in, sit in. Pramukh Swami Maharaj had this adaptability. And that is why we are, as an organization we have grown. Once he wrote a letter, Pramukh Swami Maharaj wrote a letter to a senior saint transferring him from one temple to another temple for some other activity. He had kept the letter with him. At that time, two of our elder saints who would look after the saint's activity, their uh, portfolios, the type of the services they are to be involved in, the place that they stay, their transfers and everything, two of our elder saints, they came in and they suggested Pramukh Sai Maharaj that for this senior saint, we have thought for this, temp this temple, this city and this activity. Pramukh Sai Maharaj found it quite good. He immediately brought out that letter which he himself had written and he tore it off. And our two elder saints, administrators, he would say, Swamiji, why did you do this? What is this? He said, for the same saint, I had thought something else, but I found yours quite better. This is called adaptability with your team, 
with your subordinates, with your colleagues. Of course, both the elders said, Swamiji, your thought would be much better than us. He, he said, no, I found your better. When you are sitting in a meeting, you have proposed your part of the idea as well. And thereafter, a one and a half to two hour discussion, if wholeheartedly you can accept a better thought from one of your team members and express yourself, okay, yours is quite better than me. This is the ultimate of adaptability. Ultimate of adaptability. And then only you can make a good team. Good teams and good team players are not necessarily always good professionals or highly skilled people. They need to be good human beings. Talents and skills are part of small part, I would say residue part of good human beings. It will come out. So, this is the adaptability that we find in such great personalities who lead huge organizations. You learn it from nature as well. You minute, minutely observe the flora and fauna around you. You minute, minutely very observe the lower levels of the animal kingdom, small animals. Their adaptability capacity is very high. They are highly saksham when it comes to adaptability. How many of you have seen sunflowers on the tree on the plant? Sunflower plants, just raise your hands full. Quite many of you. You know sunflower, it chases the sun. From the morning rise to the evening set. It always moves looking towards the sun. In short, it chases the light. What happens on cloudy days? What happens on rainy days when there is no sun or lesser sun? Or what happens at dark? Have you seen the sunflowers during the dark or when there is less sun or that means cloudy or rainy? In which position they are? Tell me if somebody has seen. Looking down towards the earth. Looking, okay, everybody is making this kind of symbol, isn't it? Action. You are wrong. Look at it again. When there is lesser sun, no cloud, no rain, or the dark, sunflowers will face each other, not look towards the ground. Dekhna. You know why? When the two sunflowers, they face each other, scientists for years have experimented on this, they exchange each other's energy. So that every sunflower leaves for tomorrow morning's sunrise. A very good example from nature when it comes to adaptability. They exchange energies. A typical sunflower has, for example, sunflower A has lesser energy to pass the whole night. Then sunflower B will give some part of his energy. They exchange energies. That is light that they have stored during the day from the sun. So when the times are not good, when situations don't favor you, when there are some oppositions that you can less handle, a good adaptability among team members will make everybody survive for the next sunrise, for the next good opportunity. So making yourself Saksham part two, that is adaptable, is the most important virtue that you can develop to in the present times to carry your work forward, to carry your life forward. Most important aspect. Because people who change after the change will survive. People who don't even change even after the change will die. But 
people who change with the change will prosper but one step ahead people who change before the change will lead got it people who change before the change will lead that is adaptability to change you foresee the change coming the moment you become capable saksham of foreseeing a change in your profession or life and you change yourself before the change comes to you to adapt yourself to the new change you will lead if not to that level if you foresee the change and even change with the change not before the change but with the change even then you will sustain and prosper but if you are procrastinate enough lazy enough to change yourself after the change at least you will survive because you have accepted change and drastic thing is if you don't change even after the change you will die and many of them have died many companies have died a big case of nokia very popular on the social media and you might have learned it well so i'm not elaborating it refused to accept the android os and it died now it is coming back with the android platform you have to change adaptability to change is intelligence you know one good adaptability pramukh swami maharaj wanted to build a mandir in london to showcase hindu tradition indian culture and everything to the people in the west today that mandir stands in nisdan 1995 we inaugurated it and readers digest has written for that mandir that it is the eighth wonder of the world so far it is for three times in the guinness book of world records the baps swaminarayan mandir in london in nisdan you can see on our website baps.org masterpiece 28000 cowed pieces were sent from india again the stone marble everything came from europe shipped to uh, shipped to india road transported to rajasthan back and sent to london this i am talking of the year 92 93 94 25 years back imagine the logistics then and all successfully done not a single piece out of this 28000 cowed ones was damaged now i'm giving you a good target of logistics we achieved the sigma 6 at that time sigma 6 did not exist at that time we taught what is sigma 6 not a single piece of 28000 cowed pieces from the smallest which was half an inch to the largest which was 50 by 50 feet 28000 cowed pieces pieces from rajasthan to kandla these pieces were road transported and then on in containers sent to london and then they were stuck to build a whole monument and we completed the whole project in 26 months now see the adaptability i want to come to that point now Pramukh Swami Maharaj said we want to build a full fledged gym in the campus of the mandir now this was all together out of everybody's mind why a gym i am talking of the concept of pramukh swami maharaj 25 years back at that time his age was 75 a 75 year old indian sadhu talking of a full fledged gym in the mandir campus and pramukh sai maharaj was asked by a trustees swami ji why a gym we need a good good auditorium for happenings pramukh sai maharaj said today's youth if they will come for gym in the, at this place some day they will climb the stairs and go for darshan and go in the rt to bring them to the mandir let's have a gym as well and today we found of the 25 years highly 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 successful idea because the newcomers would see the to have a full fledged gym in the year 1995 even in london it was something new the gym concept in india started in the last 10 15 years to have 
full-fledged gyms and each and every nook and corner of the city and people really aware of it and utilizing it. It all started in the last decade. I'm talking of 25 years back. At that time, probably there was not a gym of this class in the whole city of London. And we did it in Mandir campus. And its size, you are sitting in this hall today, that campus of ours in London, residing this gym, that's just the gym area is five times this hall. In the center of London, Pramukh Swami Maharaj devoted so much space to gym. And they could even play cricket, indoor cricket inside. <laughs> Imagine such five, six halls. But that would attract all the Indian youths to that place. And our youth strength grew from a few tens to thousands today, thanks to big concept of this. See, adaptability to change. A 75-year-old Indian saint, just fifth standard pass, Pramukh Swami Maharaj, he could think of a gym in a mandir. Imagine this. Because he could adapt himself to the new generation. How to be with them? What do they like? What can I give them so that I can give them a touch of spirituality later on? What is the first step to bring them close? And he put a gym in between them and the mandir. And we got results, beautiful results. Our youth conventions in London today, it's like 2,000, 3,000 youths. Every summer we have it. This is called adaptability with the situation, with the norms, with the times, with the time, people of those times, with the generations of those times, and then you grow. We grew in London because of this concept, especially in the, among the, amongst the youth. So adaptability to change is intelligence, and your good adaptability for change can bring you good results. How many of you have seen the video of the U.S. Marines being trained? None of you, I think you must download it from somewhere and show it. Worth the video to be shown on this Saksham platform today. The U.S. Marines being trained. The amount of adaptability that they are taught. Unimaginable. For a week, they are from a chopper landed in the midst of a dense forest. Only one thing they are given in their hand is a small knife. No food, no water, no second piece of cloth. Now survive for one week. He has to survive there. He has to search water. He has to search food. He has to climb the tops of the trees to escape from animals. He has to survive for one week. This is the last exercise that he has to pass to become a U.S. Marine. And no doubt, then only they can find enemies in enemy countries. And they did it. They're highly capable people. Skill, capabilities, adaptabilities, unbelievable. They are taught that without food or water, you should be able to give your utmost capabilities and best working performance after 72 hours. 72 hours without water or food, still you should be capable of standing and do your work right. They are trained to that level. They can survive in any temperatures. They are made to survive from minus 40 to plus 40. They can wither anything. Adaptability. Human mind, human body is capable. I just described a couple of it. You will, when you will see the video, I think it's just 7 or 8 minutes, but worth it. How the US Marines are made to develop their abilities and how they are taught to adapt to the worst of circumstances. They are taken to the deserts of the Middle East for training, where the temperatures are 50 degrees. And they have to survive there as well, stay there as well. They are also taken in the north of Canada there, when there is ice, where there is minus 30, to survive there as well. 
so adaptability capacity of a human being is beyond our imagination that's what i want to tell human body bhagwan swami narayan has said in one of his scriptures that human body and human mind is highly capable of adaptability highly capable so when you are highly capable of adaptability you will sustain the final core value of your saksham summit first is ability second is adaptability and third is sustainability you will sustain with a good amount of abilities developed in your profession and life good amount of adaptability and you will sustain in the worst of circumstances let me put forward today in this saksham summit a very formidable statement very authentic statement and a very concrete one in this world there is no situation that a human mind cannot handle we have the sustaining capacity only thing we need to look at the situation in that way there was a great tennis player a female tennis player by the name of martina navratilova in the 80s and the 90s always the title clash between her and chris evert lloyd just a few years back she was still playing tennis in the doubles or the mixed doubles till the age she was like 43 44 yeah when her age was like 43 44 an interviewer once asked her that you can still play tennis at the age of 43 because tennis is a very demanding sport you still play tennis at 43 and that too at international level professional circuit at 43 the answer she gave excellent she said sir you and me and the audience knows that i am 43 the ball doesn't know that i am 43 the ball that i am hitting the ball doesn't know i am 43 i'm only concerned if the ball knows i'm 43 rest if all knows and the ball doesn't know it's fine i can go on you have the sustaining capacity if you keep this attitude she sustained at 43 to be a professional player in international circuits in tennis at 43 is not an ordinary thing why did she sustain with this attitude the ball is ball i am i why would i allow it to hover over my mind the ball doesn't know i am 43 and until the ball doesn't know it's fine i can carry on a fine answer it carries many meanings when sachin tendulkar completed 20 years of international cricket it's great sustainability 20 years of performance at the international level in any sport is a very big thing in itself because you need tremendous physical fitness you need strong mental balance you need a good emotional equilibrium only then you can sustain at the top for 20 years and that to constantly giving a good performance the discipline the dedication wanted for it unimaginable any sport 20 years of international performance is a very big achievement in itself times of india carried out a very special supplement for him interviewing him and sachin was asked sir what is the secret of your success of this level of performance at the highest level for 20 years and sachin gave a very wonderful answer two things he said first at 6 in the morning i am at the nets discipline discipline is the principal factor of sustainability at 6 i am at the nets first i face 500 deliveries only then anything else and the interviewer goes sir if you have scored a century or double century on the previous day that means you are in a good nick in a good form in a good touch 
Sachin goes, even if I have done a double century on the previous day, I'm still not out at, that is even when I'm still at the crease. Next day morning six, I'm at the nets. Sunil Gavaskar, when he was asked the secret of his success, again a great batsman, the first batsman to complete 10,000 runs in test cricket. He was asked, what is the secret of his success? At that time, the 3D imaging was very popular, so he said 3D. And then Peter said, what, does you, what do you mean by 3D? He says, discipline, dedication, and determination. This is sustainability. Your discipline, your dedication, and your determination will sustain you for long years in your field. Why does the man at the top today in the country, working 18 hours a day at the age of 69, how can he? And he did not fall sick for even one minute in the last five years. He did not fall sick for even one minute in five years at the age of 69. And every day you would read in the newspapers, he's appearing somewhere in India. What a traveling. And everywhere he goes, he's a responsible person. He's constantly under the glare of cameras. Whatever he speaks, it carries too much weightage. Anybody, any head of the state I'm talking. Because it's a very responsible position. One word wrong out of his mouth can create ripples. Such a responsible thing. And he has not made a public mistake in five years. Why? 3D. Discipline. Dedication and determination. This is how you sustain. This is how you carry on. Sachin Tendulkar said the second thing. He said, I not only play cricket, I drink cricket, I eat cricket, I sleep cricket, I dream cricket, I wake up cricket, I walk cricket, I talk cricket. It's cricket, cricket, cricket 24-7. So a small part of your mind, if it is constantly engaged and focused, other part of the mind, you can adapt to different situations. Like you are at a party, enjoy the party. You are with your elders and parents, find a good time sitting with them. All these things happen. One small part of your brain should be constantly focused on what you want to be in life. Anywhere, anytime. That will make you a good sustenance element. One small part of the brain should be absolutely dedicated to, you, to your goals. All the times. Even when you are at a party and enjoying, one small part of the brain should be constantly aware that what my goal is. Even we are watching a T20 international final, World Cup final. One small part of the brain should be engaged in, my job is actually to become the CEO here. Fine, okay. Watch the match. After 10 minutes, fine, he's batting well. My job is CEO. After 10 minutes, oh my God, he's a wonderful ball. He uprooted the middle stem. Okay, but I want to be a CEO. <laughs> Small part of the brain, constantly engaged and focused towards your ultimate goal and achievement that you want in your life, that will become the principal source of energy for your sustenance. These are some of the very crucial, typical, and underlying less in current Touch points that I'm giving you. So this is how people have survived. Great people have... This people, I named this, they've gone all through the thicks and thins of life. I talked of Martina Navratilo, I talked of Sachin Tenuk, anybody. They've gone through different phases in life. Like everybody of us go. But 3D is the sustenance. And the practical part of 3D is a small part of your brain constantly focused. We know the superstar Amitabh Bachchan, he passed through a very tough phase in the late 80s and early 90s. Very tough phase of his life. How did he sustain? 3D. Simple. Discipline, dedication and determination. 3D survives you. Keep it in your heart. Keep it in your mind. And you will do it. When we wanted to build a temple in London, we had purchased the land in a suburb called Harrow in London. And the neighborhood, they put a case in the court against us that these people would 
have all their festivals going on and drum beating and everything till late night, till midnight, and that would disturb our peace, our privacy. And say, so they put up a case in the court. We also engaged a good lawyer. They had a lawyer from that side. One of the legal process in the West is that you collect signature. It's called a signature campaign. The neighborhood that is a part of this whole story, both the parties, they go out house to house, person to person, make them explain the, like, explain them, make them understand the whole, they are part of the story. And that gives the freedom to the neighbor, anybody in the neighborhood to sign out either of the two parties. They collected more signatures than us. We were foreigners there. So the court decided to give the judgment in their favor. Pramukh Swami Maharaj was here in Gujarat. He got a call from our chairman of trustees that Swamiji, we have lost the case and we will not be able to build there. Now this was a severe setback, a heartbreaking news. How did Pramukh Sahib respond? See such great personalities, great doers, great performers, extraordinary people upon this earth. How do they respond to such setbacks, such failures, such falls in life? Pramukh Sahib's first words, we accept God's wish. See, he stabilized himself. Second thing was important to sustenance. He said, we have put in all our resources and all our know-hows. Now results, final, whatever, we accept it. This is a very important thought for sustenance. You don't repent if you have put all your resources for the success. You will repent only if you have not put all your resources that were available to you for the success and then you failed. Then you will repent. So the second thought for good sustenance is, did I put all my resources that were available to me for the success of this work? Fine, if you have done it, then don't repent the failure. That is a good aspect for sustenance. That you don't repent failures. And you don't repent failures only if you have put all your energies into it. Third thing Pramukh Sami Maharaj said, that we have decided to build a temple there. We will build it start searching for another land. This is called sustenance. When we have decided to do something, we will make it happen at any cost. If one door is closed, we will open the next door. And if there is no door, we will make a door. That is sustenance. That spirit, that spirit is sustenance. So the spirit should be this. If the door is closed, I will search for another door. If there is no another door, I will create a door in the wall. But I will make things happen. That spirit, that hope and confidence is sustenance. Hope and confidence is your sustenance. For this spirit, you have to constantly master your inner dialogue. I would again suggest a very good book for you. The title of the book is Still Power. That is sustenance. The power to still. S-T-I-L-L. S-T-I-L-L. Still power. One word. Beautiful book. The author is Gareth Kramer. Gareth Kramer. K-R-A-M-M-E-R. Still power. That is sustenance. How to develop your still power? Develop your sustenance capability. In this he says, your performance and your sustenance is restricted by the type of the inner dialogue that you have with your own self. Will I be able to do it? Is it my job? This is out of my routine. I don't know whether I'll be able to perform or not. What if I don't do it? All the inner dialogues that happen within you when you are entrusted with a responsibility or given a job, decides your sustenance capacity, your still power. He's a sports psychologist. So he psychologically treats sports persons. But that is applicable to life and any profession. Not just sports. It is applicable to all professions. In this book, at the end, he gives a wonderful formula. I would definitely suggest all of you write this formula. 
And if you don't take anything else from this talk, take this formula with you. He gives this formula, performance. Write it down. Performance. Is equal to capabilities minus internal interference. Performance is equal to capabilities minus internal interference. That is, if you develop the highest spirit, I can make it happen. Sustained. You will sustain. Performance is equal to capabilities minus your internal interference. He uses another good phrase in this book. I loved this book. I read it in the late 90s. One of the good 25 books that I've read. It stands among the top 25 that I ever read. One of the good phrases that he used in this book and teaches us is again, I would suggest you write it. Part of it because I love it very much. You have to write it. <laughs> and more part of it because you will also enjoy and you will also, it's a good helpful to you. Another good phrase that he writes in this book is, stop yourself, write it down. Stop yourself from stopping yourself. Stop yourself from stopping yourself. I want everybody of you to repeat with me. Stop yourself. From, from stopping yourself. Stopping yourself. Now again, repeat with me. I will, I will stop myself, stop myself from, from stopping, myself. stopping myself. You got it? You will enjoy this phrase. Stop. I will stop myself from stopping myself. You, your inner dialogue, your own thought process are the biggest hurdle for you to perform in the worst of times and sustain yourself. Nobody else. No other factor. As simple as that. And the last thing that I would end my talk with. A very good story that I like. Once a good uh, middle-aged person must be in his mid-40s. On a fine Saturday evening when he was off from his work. He decided to go and watch a football match in his neighborhood. So he just walked inside. It was an off day, weekend. And he went and took his seat. Besides him was a very young 12-year-old boy, enthusiastic and supporting a team. With colors and flags and everything. And he just looked at him. And he said, uh, my little boy, if you don't mind, can you give me the score? Because he was halfway the match. And the boy said, uh, this is my team and the other team and they are leading us 3-0. And he said, the way he was talking, he was not at all discouraged. And the news that he is giving to me, that they are leading us 3-0, was all with enthusiasm. They are leading us 3-0. This is my team. They are their team. Again, he was started flagging and this and that. And the middle-aged person, he got, there is something energetic. And he said that to the little boy after a couple of minutes, aren't you discouraged that... It's almost half time. And you are trailing 3-0. Aren't you discouraged? And the little boy said, Sir, I have hope. I have confidence. There are team and our managers. They will perform well. And we will win. We will overcome the situation. He said, why? And the little boy said, Sir, why are you asking me why? Still there is half time to go for the final whistle. Why are you challenging me before the final whistle has blown? Beautiful teaching. Don't decide the outcome of your life before the final whistle has blown. You stand all chances to win. You stand all chances to overcome any situation and win till you don't accept the final whistle. 
He, the little boy said, sir, the, the final vision is yet to go. And as the happening happened, the match ended with 5-4 in the boy's favor. And they won the match. The gentleman, he says, when I was leaving the stadium, my seat, the little boy looked at me, smiled, waved his hand and said, hi, uncle, bye. That means he indirectly told, see how it came out? But that man writes, the author is unknown of this story. He writes back that at night when I was going to bed, the one question that was with that smile and face of that 12-year-old little boy in my memory was, Sir, why would I accept the outcome when still the referee is yet to blow the final whistle? He said this was a very big learning for me today. And the second thing the author writes at the end of this story is again a beautiful sentence. I would like you to write this. And the sentence is, see, good sentence for sustainability, eh? good phrase rather for sustainability. Half time, this is from a soccer match. Right, half time is not full time. You got it? Half time is not full time. Don't accept the results at half time. Anything can change in the second half. Sustain yourself. If you sustain yourself, the second half is yours. If you accept the results of the final outcome in the half time, you are lost, you are gone. Sustenance capability is more sustained with this thought process, with this spirit, that half time is not full time. And anything can happen any situation can be overcome. You can sustain yourself till the referee has not blown the final whistle. We all sitting here. We are at half time. When you have a good sustenance capacity, the referee is still yet to blow the whistle. So fine. Carry on. As simple as that. When the, you make a spider fall from a net or a wall, what does it do? And you make it fall again. What does it do? Sustenance capability you learn from a spider. Tremendous sustenance capability. To that extent that it will sit in its web hours and hours and hours to wait for a prey. Sustenance. So we are inspired with that. So your Saksham Summit is these three things. I think I touched upon the principles and core values right. Ad ability, adaptability, and sustainability is with this thought processes, with this actions, with this spirit. My all prayers for all of you. Thank you very much for calling me here. Have a great day and time and life ahead. My all prayers for all of you. Thank you very much.